Yo, 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 what it do, what it be, it's your boy A-N-T, repping the game, gang, you know we don't play none of that, all of that, go ahead and subscribe if you're new to the channel, hit that notification bell, because I got hot content dropping steadily on here, and I'll be on Twitch as well, A-N-T underscore G-G-E, all of that, and today this is going to be the first episode of a new series I got dropping called Hip Hop History. And we're going to be discussing and chronicling the history of hip-hop throughout all uh, uh, coasts and all of that. Some little-known stories. we just going to put a microscope on it. And it, I love hip-hop, so I'm going to be telling you all about stories that y'all may have already heard. And then I got some stories tucked away that I've been waiting to kind of drop. So it's going to be a fun series. And on top of that, I got a the greatest of all time series i got so stay tuned for that i'm gonna be dropping these every friday this one gonna be coming a little bit late but it's cool i'm getting my little schedule down so you know stay tuned like i'll be saying so let's get right into it on august 13th 1973 a young woman by the name of cindy campbell no not the main character in scary movie that was a white woman i uh this was an african-american and she was the younger sister of Clive Campbell, who we all know today as DJ Cool Herc. And if y'all don't know who DJ Cool Herc is, do your research, youngins. But uh, anyway, Cindy Campbell was in need of extra money for school clothes as summer of 73 was just ending and the school year was just starting. And Clive Campbell, a.k.a. DJ Cool Herc, her older brother, had been practicing this new technique he had taught himself where he would extend the breakdown or the get down on a song and then switch to the breakdown of another song. For example, he would take the James Brown Give It Up or Turn It Loose break and mix it into Bongo Rock. And from the Bongo Rock break, he would... Uh, mix that in with the Mexican uh, by Babe Ruth, the uh, the English rock band, not not the baseball player. But uh, so he would be mixing these breaks, and the break, of course, is you know the part of the song that everybody would dance to at the time. And so he would just extend the pretty much the best part of the song, and people was digging that shit. So cool, cool Herc himself has stated that he was practicing this technique for nearly a year. And he kind of became well known in the neighborhood for playing music, you know, holding block parties and stuff like that. And his younger sister had convinced him to DJ for a back to school party in their apartment on 1520 Sedgwick Avenue. Now, little did anybody know, this back-to-school party that Cool Herc was about to throw was going to get the party jumping and people would be coming up with their own flow for the next 40 years. They'll keep that shit rocking. You know, I kind of did a little freestyle for y'all on that. It's hip-hop. Uh, but because DJ Cool Herc's back-to-school party is where hip-hop would be birthed, it would then sweep the nation and then the whole world as hip-hop slang, style, and, of course, music would capture the attention of people around the globe but even though hip-hop as a sound was birthed at cool herc's party hip-hop's look had always been about creating your own unique look and style as urban streetwear and the style we would see today really wouldn't come around until run dmc and rakim and uh, rakim rakim in the 80s and uh in the late 70s, hip-hop was less about rappers or even lyrics necessarily. It was about rocking the party with a dope DJ. It was really more about the DJ and the beat. And, you know, they would be it would be more of chanting like, clap your hands, everybody, you know, little stuff like that. Or when I say, hey, y'all, you know, stuff like that. That's really where it, uh, that's where it all started. That's what the first MCs were. And they weren't even called rappers. It was called MCs. And uh, it was, again, it was less about the MC and the lyrics at the time, and it was more about DJs 
and, and, and dancing, really killing killing the ladies with the dance moves you saw on Soul Train over the beat, you know, that week. But if you go back and look at some of the outfits rappers were wearing in the early years, for whatever reason, you're going to see a lot of leather and crazy outfits. We was, They was just getting over that disco era and shit like that. So you're going to see some crazy Prince type shit in the early days of hip hop. If you go back and look at the, uh, uh, what is it, the, the message by by grandmaster flash and all, all of them and i'll get to more of them in a minute go back and look at that video and look at what the fuck they wearing and they spitting for show is one of the greatest fucking songs not just rap songs but one of the greatest songs of all time and these motherfuckers is dressed crazy <laughs> definitely not dressed like today's rappers but if you uh like i said it, we wouldn't see the style of today, you know, except maybe, you know, like I said, Run DMC, Rakim, EPMD, uh, Wu-Tang Clan for show will really bring that New York street style, you know, baggy clothes and Tim's to the forefront. And, you know, later the South would go overboard with the big clothes. But that that's for a whole nother video. Cool Herc, as I mentioned before, was the originator of hip hop sound, but he doesn't have as much mainstream clout as Grandmaster Flash and Africa Bambata. And that's largely due to him not wanting to go commercial. Uh, and even then, there was a, like, Cool Herc had an MC. L little known fact, or well, it's actually more known now. He actually has a, a DJ Vlad interview guy by the name of Coke LaRock. He was the MC at DJ Cool Herc's back to school party. Crazy, right? So this dude, Coke LaRock, was really the first MC slash rapper, and he was in there at clap your hands it, when I say, hey, y'all say, it, it, he wasn't, that's the thing, though, it's different, you can't, he wasn't lyrical. MCing in, it wasn't really a vital part of hip-hop at this particular moment in time, and there was even, you know, there was a other famous DJ and, and MC tandems that came out after cool Herc, like there was a a cat by the name of uh, dj hollywood and he had a uh, the mc eddie chiba who i'll get i'll talk more about them uh later on in the series but back then it was like i said less about you know the rapper and it was really more uh about the dj and you know they would shout out the DJs. Well, this is my DJ. And, you know, they were sure they would do basic little, like, fundamental rhymes. But it was nowhere on the level of, you know, spiritual, lyrical, miracle. That wouldn't come out till later. For, uh, KRS-One calls it. This was the era of when everybody w was ball with the ball. But dang, a dang, diggy, diggy. It, that's, that's how it was. it was. Everybody had the same kind of flow. Everybody had the same kind of callbacks and chants. You kind of... You couldn't bite. That was the thing. Everybody knew you had to kind of create your own kind of chant and your own kind of brand because it was frowned upon just, you know, not to have your own shit. You feel me? Originality has always been a big thing in hip hop. And even if you did, you know, bite somebody's lines or steal some lyrics, you had to make it your own. You had to kind of flip it. People would call you the fuck out if you out here stealing lyrics and shit. And even though Cool Herc didn't want to go commercial, others in the community saw this new sound as something new that could be brought into the music industry. And within a couple years, there were several hip hop crews throughout New York that were doing graffiti, break dancing, and even emceeing. Emceeing or being the master of ceremonies and, and being a rapper are synonymous with each other. But every rapper ain't an MC. You know, an MC can control the crowd. Some rappers just want to rap, spit their little 16 bars, get the fuck out. You know, r rappers, there's more rappers today than an MC. I feel like MC is more of that that old era that, oh, uh, clap your hands every when I say, yo, you, you know, just have that crowd interaction. Not a lot of that anymore. Motherfuckers just want to go out there, spit over some fucking, uh, what is it, the pre-recorded lines like they Milli Vanilli and shit to rap over they tracks and get the fuck out. That's cool, though. That You know, it, it's, how, it's how it's grown over the years. But Now, the people that are credited with pioneering hip-hop in its, in its infancy and 
as it crossed over and, and are credited with crossing it over into the music industry and making it mainstream uh, are Grandmaster Flash, Africa Bambata, uh, and Russell Simmons. Now, Russell Simmons and Rick Rubin would found Def Jam, which I'll get more into in a future video. But for now, I'm going to focus on Grandmaster Flash and Africa Bambata. Now, I don't want to talk too much about Bambata because he's been accused of very serious allegations. He did start the iconic Zulu Nation, which rappers like Big Boy and Ice-T are part of. But the Zulu Nation and others close to Bambata, some of them seem to have known about his disgusting criminal behavior since back then. So in short, Bambata was a hip-hop legend, but... His reputation has been ruined, and his influence is now more of a shameful stain on the fabric of hip-hop. And it's unfortunate that as much as the Zulu Nation has done for the black community and for hip-hop, their reputation has taken a major hit due to their affiliations with Bambata. Now, before I get into Grandmaster Flash, I would like to point out that before Cool Herc's party, there were others practicing those elements of hip-hop. DJs, MCs, breakdance crews, graffitis, artists, all that. Uh, all those were around before hip-hop had a name, but Africa Bambata came up with the concept that those four elements and the all-important fifth element of knowledge and using that knowledge to learn from either yours or others' struggles and transgressions uh, would basically be form the the pillars of what we know now is hip-hop and with these five elements and uh cool herc's legendary block party and the forefathers like grandmaster flash cool mo d crews like the juice crew and boogie down productions the, those are the foundations the pillars of hip-hop it was being built in and it was being built in some of the poorest neighborhoods in new york but it wouldn't take long for major labels to try and capitalize off of this new sound and gentrify because at the time the music industry was very uh let's just say helen keller like they were very blind and deaf to not only black people's struggles and even the poor people's struggles but they had a very deaf ear to what the kids and what the youth were into hip-hop at this point was only a street level kind of thing and i'll kind of get into how you know it was a very viable source. As, you know, hip-hop parties were getting started or even being thrown after Cool Herc's party. People saw that, oh, we can throw events like this and make money, which, I'll, again, it'll be in there for the next video when I, when I cover Def Jam. And Henry Ford once said, money doesn't change men, it unmasks them. And sure, it's fun making music with your friends and everybody's on the same level, but when someone comes and offers just one or two y'all some life-changing bread it's unfortunate but some people gonna switch up and when lawyers and royalties and all that get involved it can complicate and break up friendships relationships family relationships all that ask nwa matter of fact before there was nwa there was grandmaster flash and the furious five now grandmaster flash also DJed at parties and clubs around New York in the 70s. And in the late 70s, he formed a group with Keith Cowboy, Melly Mel, and Kid Cre and the Kid Creole. Now, Melly Mel was the first one to use the term MC. So the group was called Grandmaster Flash and the three MCs. But they added two more MCs named Raheem and Scorpio, and thus Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five were born. Now, as I stated earlier, Melly Mel might have been the first one to use the term MC and, and use that phrase and coin that term but also Keith Cowboy also in 1978 there was a party a little block party they was throwing for a friend named Billy who was uh, going away into the army which wasn't very uh, it wasn't very uh, common for urban black youth to get drafted into the army at this time so they were throwing a little going away block party and again, like I said, it was the era of the chance, the call back and forth. So while they was doing the block party and stuff, they would get on a mic and say, Oh, Billy, I hope you, you know, enjoyed this is your last night because he was going to ship out the next day. Oh, we hope you enjoy your last night. 
you know, because in the morning or whatever, from now on, it's going to be hip, hop, hip, hop, right, left. Like, they would do the army cadence, but they hip, hop, left, right, you don't stop, hip, hop, you know. I'm, I'm probably butchering that, but that's how it went. It's hip, hop, left, right, hip, hop, you don't stop, type shit. Like, that's, that's, w and then the next day they said... Uh, according to Busy B, who was there, he said the next day, motherfuckers was like, "Oh, you, were you there at the at the park at the at the park party or whatever?" You know, they was over there, they was hip hopping, you know, and and from there it took off. So it was it was on from there. Now, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five signed to Sugar Hill Records in 1980, and in 1982 they dropped a legendary song, "The Message." And despite that song being a smash hit, it caused a rupture within the group. And in 84, Flash, Kid Creole, and Raheem left Sugar Hill and became known as just Grandmaster Flash. Meanwhile, Melly Mel stayed and became Grandmaster Melly Mel in The Furious Five. Eventually, both groups disintegrated and then came together over the years. But as you can see, even during its adolescence, hip-hop was not immune to the treachery of the music business. In next video, I'll get into Russell Simmons, Rick Rubin, Curtis Blow, and how hip hop evolved from being just about, you know, just the DJ and the MC hyping him up to it being more about the MC. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Like I said, stay tuned. I got more hot content dropping soon, so you should definitely subscribe. I'm like I said, I'm gonna be getting Hogwarts gameplay. I'm gonna be getting uh. What's that? What else am I playing right now? Getting Elden Ring gameplay going right now. Uh, but it's been your boy, A N T, repping the game gang. You know we don't play none of that, all of that. Go ahead and uh, yeah. Hope y'all be safe. Don't get smoked. Just about down here. You see me? I'm out here I'm playing this Elden Ring. I'm definitely gonna be uh, I'll be streaming uh, Uncharted. Definitely started streaming Uncharted. Still got my Ragnarok Let's Play on here. Also streaming 2K on Twitch. I'm not doing Madden, bro. Fuck Madden. Straight up. And after this year, it's fuck Call of Duty, too. So, also WWE's coming out. Probably going to be doing gameplays on that. So stay tuned for that. Definitely got hype gameplays and, and hot content, hot topics. Not the clothing store, none of that. But, uh, yeah, like I said, y'all, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Just kind of rambling, trying to fill up time for this end of the video. But, yeah, it's been your boy, A-N-T. From the motherfucking G-A-M-E, G-A-N-G. Game, gang. I'm out. Peace.